Welcome back guys, morning three, buttoning up, show you what we got left here, uh, we have put our sway bar end links on, we need to get our spring clamps on, lower shock bolts, our cotter pins, our, our other rotors hang our brakes yesterday I adjusted the uh, track bar so our axle is now centered left to right or close to it and then comes the fun stuff adjusting our toe in why do we need to adjust our toe in Morning, Gray. ZJs and XJs have what's called an inverted Y when it comes to the steering geometry. That link, and as you can see right there, oh, 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 let's get you over here. The bottom of the end link there from there goes from the steering knuckle up up here to our steering box and from uh, that ball joint over the higher you lift it pulls the tie rods in causing a toe in situation which will make for some very screwy driving so we will not be able to do that do it make the adjustment until we get everything all buttoned up and just so you know all right, we got our shocks on oh they're bolted in the top is all buttoned up Master cylinders back where it belongs, air cleaners back in. Everything's all hunky dory. I'm leaving that on for right now until I open up the very hatch. One thing you don't want to forget our vent line. I opted to use the original. The original was still in good shape. Well, the original for the high pinion. The high pinion has this big monstrous breather hose and an actual breather as opposed to the the ZJ's which was have vacuum lines bigger than that uh, getting back to what I was talking about enough with that I uh, happen to find since I'm not using the boots on the, the shock I have a sector black zip tie I brought the breather up just about the height of the hood if I get water up to here I probably am not worried about getting water in the front axle I'm probably more worried about everybody seeing me on the news being washed downstream which is probably what would happen so uh, snip this off so we don't have this flopping in the breeze and everything under the hood should be done underneath got our cotter pins in our tie rod ends tie rod ends tightened up of course we got our sway bar end link installed I'm gonna have to grease those guys up our rotors and our brake calipers all now installed our shocks bolted on top and bottom Got our, no, you can't see that now, can you? No, you can't. Right there? Yeah, right there. The uh, front drive shafts is bolted in. 
Uh, let's see. We should almost be ready to uh, d start doing our front end alignment. I'm going to get this thing to once over and make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. Tightened up. Torqued. Uh, tied back. Tied up. Taped down. Battened down. You know, the whole nine yards. Okay. We are now complete. Everything under there. It's done. You even had time to grease the quick disconnects, the tie rod ends. We tightened up the lock nut for the lower control arm to, to I believe, I think the spec was, oh my god, torque. Zip tied up our bent line, drive shaft done, shock upper and lower, brakes back on. Let's uh, do a quick. No, it doesn't hurt to do a double. Well, triple check. Okay. Oh my God! Torque bolt down. And up. All greased up. All right. Looks like you're ready to start our front end alignment. Uh, previously, yesterday, as in previously. I used the track bar to center the axle on double D here. Let me, let me give you a quick rundown of what we had to do. One of my favorite positions. A lot of my back. All right. Track bar is that bar back there. The one with, one with the bend. It goes from extended mount right there. It actually curves upward and down and connects to the axle over there. How to determine center? What we've done is, see this bolt right here? This nut. I measured it, and this literally dead nuts in the middle, left to right. So, taking my tape measure, using that center mark, I went over and I rested my tape against the top of the ball joint. And I measured to here. And I did the same thing from here over to that ball joint. Sorry, that ball joint. And turned our turnbuckle here. Where is it? Where is it? It's in there somewhere. There you go. That turnbuckle. In the appropriate direction. To make our measurement from that ball joint to that ball joint equal. So, for all intents and purposes, right now, we're centered. Notice that one's turned. We need to get both of our steering knuckles facing forward. Now, when I say facing forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize this again and I am going to measure over to the end of that steering knuckle center center our steering knuckles in the forward facing position then and only then can we put our setup on our rotors and do our measuring because without that, you have no idea where we're at. So give me a couple minutes. I gotta do my measuring. Because let me tell you, it's kind of boring. It's why I haven't been uh, doing too much videoing of me actually doing the work. Because I found it gets kind of boring. And uh, yeah, you know, you know. So. Without further ado, or even less ado, I'll bring you guys right back. All right, welcome you back here. No, this is not a new idea for Jeeps. What I have 
are rods that are accentuating the angle of the rotor. Now you can do this with the tires on, but you know what, I've always had a problem with keeping whatever I needed to measure with tight against the tire. I found this works out pretty good. I oversized one hole and I drill through and I put on top of the lug, a lug on top of it. And the other one, since it didn't line up with any holes, I have it wedged on using a washer. Now, I have it centered. One thing I did notice that the Pitman arm does point almost perfectly straight back. You know, straight back in line. So, I believe I am as close as I'm going to get. What I need to do <coughs> is, as close as I can to the rotor, measure from here to the other side, make note of my measurement, come out here and do the same thing hopefully without pulling too much on the outside because the outsides do have a tendency to want to want to give a little bit and that can mess up your measurement what I'm looking for I was told six to an eighth difference between front and back of the tire Oh yeah, we're a little shy of 31 from where I'm going to be measuring. I'm not going to be measuring all the way up against. So, a 16th difference in measurement between here and there, over to the other side, I believe will be just right. Nice thing is, all right, there's our turnbuckle to make the adjustment. I have this sneaky suspicion we are towed in a little bit. Well, it's tough to say. Sometimes the visual says more than anything. Let's do some measuring and see what we come up with. Hi, Greg. Okay, first initial measurement. Yeah, it was 63 and a quarter. 62 and 5 eighths. We are towed in 5 eighths of an inch. So, we need to undo our turnbuckle. And turn it in such a way that our rod lengthens. Because we know right now, right now our tires are in this kind of position. We need to lengthen the tie rod between them in the front to bring them out to almost straight. All right, we're gonna have one sixteenth, whatever degree that is. I can't tell you. All right, we're gonna have just a slight toe in. So, um, oh, thank you, Mother Nature, for this cold. Oh, I've been coughing all morning. Oh, coughing up, I coughed up a couple Smurfs, too. Oh, man. My problem is, when I lay down underneath this thing, everything just goes in the head. I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm three feet underwater. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna go grab some tools grab my scuba gear and I'm gonna head down underneath and uh, adjust our tie rods Whew. All right I break out loose a little bit of course the only spot the only spot where I never use any seeds You freaking moron oh, There's your adjustment tool All right, what we got after three or four trips up and down, 
the Ace Rogers State Center I have 63 and 11 16 63 and 5 8 relative yeah, give or take give or take a 16th because this, like I said these things have a tendency to want to move you try not to put too much pressure on there just just enough to set the tape on so with that I believe our front end is done being adjusted I'm gonna tighten up our clamp there get our jacks get our jack underneath here jack this side up put a tire on there likewise over there set him down and see how he looks I hey, think hey. mint mint all right there's a double D on four and a half inch to lift just got done putting his tires on he's actually sitting here running you can probably hear it a little little valve tap not too bad if anything I think we're towed out a little bit we'll take him for a test drive oh and I got the hatch open oh we will we will make it a repair video on the hatch only because <laughs> I'm tired of it so stay let me go get my my phone and then we'll go for a little ride what do you think all right back from the test drive I didn't take you guys along because the camera real shaky inside I had to come up with a better mount to have you guys inside with me but some of the things that have been taken care of it no longer wanders down the road the caster has been readjusted it no longer has bump steer meaning when you hit a bump it doesn't want to wander all over the place it tracks nicely down the road I went a good half mile straight away out in front of our place here with uh, no hands on the wheel I wouldn't suggest doing that that's a no no you should always have your hands on the wheel now the only thing we need to address now is uh, put you inside here this this is now the only thing we have to deal with steering wheel is no longer straight now this is easily fixed with an adjustment down below let me get some tools and uh, we'll go down there and I'll show you what we need to do uh, all right one of my favorite positions again <laughs> okay here's where we make our adjustment for the steering wheel you need to let's see wheel has to go to the left we need to shorten this this Anything. We need to shorten this. Had to think about it for a second. It's a little screwy. So, we're going to loosen these guys up. Alright. Let's give ourselves a couple of turns. And hopefully, since we are sitting on the ground with the tires, the only thing that should be moving is the pitman arm. Let me go top side and check our steering wheel. Proven wrong. We gotta go in the opposite direction. We have to lengthen it.
All right. That should have taken us back past where we were. I'm going to go again up top and mm, check. Mm. All right. Uh, going up again. Hey, hey, come here. Come here. What do you think? Think wheel straight? <laughs> oh. Mint! <laughs> oh. Ooh, ooh, coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Thank you. Still warm. Mm. All right. Let's see what we gotta do yet. So let's get you guys off your mount. If you're wondering what I keep saying about mount, it's that I have a magnetic base on the camera. I mount it to there. Guess all we gotta do is tighten them up down there, huh? Tighten up those two two bolts, clean up our mess, put our carpet away, do a little dance, do a little victory dance. Hey, hey. A little victory dance, huh? No, no. <laughs> Not to think that we forgot about the rear. We do have new Rubicon Express four and a half inch coils for the rear. We also have I am not very I'm not exactly sure. It's been a while since I bought them. But I have new lower control arms to remedy some of that. Put our pinion back in the correct angle. They are from, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on this, a 2008, 2007 TJ. They're the rear uppers. There is a difference in the uh, mounting. The ZJs, the mounting area is a lot wider than the TJs. I have to come up with some, I would get some some plate washers or something plus I have new shocks do I no no I don't I don't have new shocks let me show, see how well those work As this is supposed to be a four and a half inch lift it is not why why is it not look at that spring That is what happens when you order a four and a half inch lifted rear coil for a ZJ. You get a variable rate front coil. I didn't say anything at the time when I bought it. I thought, ah, we, I, it can't hurt. Can it? Can it hurt? It's on the back. And as you can see, that's what happens. You get a little dirt in there, and, and you, next thing you know, every bump you take, squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Worse than a mattress, a newlyweds mattress. Squeakier than a newlyweds mattress. That's a hell of an analogy. Ah. Okay, I'm rambling. Guess we will call this a day. For every day off road is Mike. If you like the video, please click the like button, hit the uh, the bell icon, the notification icon. That'll give you a notification every time we post new content. 
if you have anything to say comment please comment good bad otherwise we'll take any kind of feedback if you see something I did wrong or you have a concern or you're curious about certain parts or tools that I used leave it in the comment box below I will I will reply to them because I don't I don't get many of them I don't get many any many comments down there but I will reply to them so for every day off-road this is Mike saying we can catch you guys later